In March 2020, Hardwired brought together educators and officials from 10 countries that are facing the challenge of intolerance and violence among their youth. They arrived with two important questions. Can we protect children from the intolerant ideas seeking to influence them? And can we guide children who have already been influenced by these ideas towards greater respect for those who are different from them? Five years ago, we set out to answer these questions. And today, these questions are just as important as the day we began. What started with a small group of teachers from Iraq has since grown to include educators from Jordan, Kosovo, Lebanon, Morocco, and South Sudan. Hardwired's teachers have worked together across religious, ethnic, and even national lines to develop innovative lessons that promote pluralism and respect for the dignity and freedom of others. They have overcome cultural taboos, grievances that span generations, institutional opposition, personal threats, political instability, and even genocide and natural disasters, all to deliver the hope of a more peaceful future to their students. I think that Hardwired's first conference about education for pluralism was really very successful. It offered successful experiences in regions in the world that are really very complex and where that topic is a taboo. And they dared uh, empower teachers, do it in their own way. Teachers like Zaina developed lessons that inspired her students in Lebanon to stand up for the rights of others in the midst of national sectarian protests. The impact of uh, the training was something unexpected because on October 17, uh, 2019, my students went to the streets and uh, they were calling for their rights for the first time. And uh, the minute they were there, they called me and they told me, Ms. Zena, we want to play uh, or we want to show the play to the people here where we need to talk about it. Because now what we have taken in theory, we're living in reality. Aya's lessons inspired students to launch an anti-bullying campaign on campus to defend the dignity and rights of refugees in her school in Jordan. The conference aims to promote pluralism and diversity and provide these amazing resources. And me, myself, as an educator, I benefited a lot from the resources that I got from the conference and I got before online. And I think if we could, let's have these resources with a big training inside the countries, inside the schools for the teachers, how to use these resources because resources alone without the training doesn't work. The training without the resources doesn't work also. But with the resources, amazing resources and that hard wired, let's say, training for the teachers is going to be an amazing job inside the classes, inside the schools. And that will, let's say, fulfill the, the whole aim of hardwired organization, which is let's say, promote pluralism, freedom, respect the other and diversity, and let people open new doors for their own thinkings and their mind. This type of education is very important to be applied in Jordan because it's going to lead for uh, accepting the other, it's going to, be, to lead for a better communication between different classes, different people inside the whole community. I think it's really good if we can train some teachers here in Jordan let them go around schools, private, public schools, and highlighted issues like this. We have seen the ripple effect of these lessons on children living under some of the most difficult circumstances. And that is why we know it is possible to prevent intolerance and overcome the cycle of conflict in their communities by teaching children to respect the dignity and the rights of others. This historic gathering was made even more special by where it was convened, in Essaouira, Morocco, at the House of Memory. This former synagogue was recently restored to preserve the history of religious and ethnic pluralism between Moroccan Muslim and Jewish communities. And it was organized in collaboration with Mr. Andre Azoulay and the Essaouira Mogador Association, which led the restoration of the House of Memory. It provided the perfect setting for a powerful conversation about the importance of education in overcoming intolerance and violence. Tina, when you decided 
to organize this meeting here and to address this issue of peace pedagogy, peace diversity, peace as an issue that needs also not only to be dealt by politicians, but has to be one of the priority because we need it vitally in all our education <coughs> systems. Education will provide the answers we are looking for because politics is not anymore able to address these issues. Officials from ministries of education arrived with questions and departed with new ideas and initiatives to implement in their own schools and countries. Well, my being here at a round table, I've really learned from uh, many case studies from different countries. And this, when I go back, I actually will try to, to showcase on this uh, program. And it is already something actually, the program actually touching my heart because it's a problem that we are facing in South Sudan. I learned a lot actually from today's gathering, uh, from this conference, and uh, I heard a lot of projects going, going through in Jordan, Lebanon, and Iraq which really I took some idea hints for them. Going back to my country, I will uh, convey it to the students, uh, my colleagues as well, to learn from them and try to initiate similar projects. And in years to come, as the program continues to grow in new countries, we're excited to see more children experience the dignity, freedom, and safety that is possible when they are taught to value the freedom and the dignity of one another. Children are vulnerable. And if they're not given the tools to respond, they're taken captive by ideas that, that, that they would not necessarily choose for themselves. <laughs>